Hi, Paul from Contemporary Synth here. In these tutorials, we explore the technical and artistic capabilities of the Roland Phantom O workstation. Today, I'm going to talk about taking music you've created in your Phantom keyboard, exporting it to a computer, and playing it from there using software synths. You might ask why you would ever do that, and I can give you a couple of reasons. One is you have a lot of songs, and you don't want to keep them all in Phantom scenes, so you keep them on your computer so you can keep track of them that way. Another would be you're on the road and you want to listen to your music or play it for someone else. And a third would be what just happened to me is you're playing somewhere else and you can't bring your keyboard, but you want to use your backing tracks. The song I'm going to talk about is O Love of God, Amor de Dios by Bob Hurd and his wife, Pia Morarty, who created Spanish lyrics. We have a lot of Spanish speakers in our community, and I was able to play at a bilingual praise event where I couldn't bring the band, so I wanted to use my backing tracks but I had to use the piano at the venue so I couldn't bring the Phantom. So i uh, give you some ideas for how you could do this also. I'm gonna put everything in Ableton Live. It's not the only DAW, any DAW will do what I'm doing today. It's just, we all get it with the keyboard. So if you wanted to use it, you could, but this would work with all the major DAWs because I'm just doing basic plugins and MIDI manipulation. The first step is to get your music out of the keyboard into the DAW. Now I'm not in an initial scene, I'm in a scene I created for this song. I have five instruments, flute, clarinet, trumpet, trombone, and bass. And I've created patterns for those. Here is the refrain. So I need to get that in there. Alternatively, you could enter it into notation software. So I have the parts I wrote out here. This is in Sibelius, but you could use Finale or MuseScore or nothing and not do export software. So it sounds the same. From your notation software, you go file export MIDI. From the Phantom, you would go pattern utility, export, you'd pick your tracks and hit execute. Note that you could include these parameters, volume, tempo, and pan left, right. You could do that from the notation software as well. And when you get all that, it's going to be included in your track. All right, so let's bring some of these in here. Here is my refrain, and here is my verse. Let's talk about my Ableton settings. For audio, I have ACO and the Phantom 06, 07, 08 selected, which is the fastest, and that's clearly the best if you're using the keyboard. To go to another sound source, though, I'm going to need to select ACO for all. That's a free download. You can go get it. It gives you the speed of ACO with the flexibility of adding other devices. The challenge is it's just not quite as fast as the Phantom O. So if you're going to be recording live into Ableton, use the Phantom driver because it's the fastest one. For MIDI, I have not been using the control surface. So I just have MIDI in for the Phantom and MIDI out. So you'll see if I pick Phantom over here and deselect it, it goes away. And the same with the output. If I select fan over here, it goes away. And that should come back. I am going to add the wavetable synth just to show you that if I put this back to all ends, that I can make all of these wavetable synth. And when I play this track, it should sound exactly like what I got from the notation software because it's using the exact same synthesizer. So no surprises there. The advantage of the, the embedded MIDI engine is that it will work with every device and every MIDI file. And while you're playing this MIDI file, you could play another MIDI file. It's super flexible. The disadvantage is, listen what happens when I put on the metronome. It's not in sync. So this is very slow. There's a lot of latency and it's not going to work for a real performance setting. So I need something a little more capable. The next easiest thing to add would be a sound straight from Ableton. And there are a whole bunch of them in here and you can download more. If you can find one you like, you're in luck. I will do a bass here just as an example. So that one's fine. I'm gonna take this, drag it over to my bass guitar. And it's better than nothing. Here, I'll let you listen. It is right on the metronome. Listen if I put everything else in there. So yeah, we know the MIDI isn't going to work. The bass is fine. If you can find an Ableton tone that you like, that is definitely what to do because it is uh, super easy and it's already integrated. So 
What if it doesn't? What if you can't? What if MIDI isn't right and the Ableton tones are not right? And that gets me to the thing that I wanted to show you the most, and that is a plugin. When you import plugins, they show up in these folders and it gives you a lot of additional capability that you can get from the internet. The one that I'm going to use is from the Roland Cloud Manager. Now you go to the Roland site, create an account, and you can download the Cloud Manager software. Typically I go to Hardware Instruments, Synthesizers, 06, 07, 08, and we can download all of this stuff and add it to the Phantom, and a lot of it's free. Uh, I've talked about that in another tutorial. But it's all going to the hardware. If you want to take something on the road, you need to go to the software. And if you're going to software, the best option here is Xenology. So you can get the full up version for 230, or you can get the light version for free. I have the light version, and I will show you how it works. When you download and install it, it's a little tricky to get it working because it just says installation complete. You need to go to this plugins folder and make sure that your folder here matches where your installation is. The installation will default to program files, common files, and then you point it to the VST3 folder. You could move it around, but they just need to be in sync. All right, then it shows up and you drag it over. VST, and I'll show you how this little vocab sheet here. VST is a synthesizer. When we've talked about this before, our keyboard, our fingers create human actions, and that's using the controller. The sequencer, like in this case, the pattern recorder, records all that and plays it back like a player piano. The synthesizer is the magic that creates sound from that, that is instrument specific and has all the different bells and whistles that you might want. We just talked about the Phantom Voices. Those are the ones that ship with the keyboard. We played the, gener the MIDI generator in the operating system. Now we're gonna talk about VSTs, which is Virtual Studio Technology. And that's just a coding standard that allows third-party software developers to build their synth magic in a way that plugs directly into the DAWs and allows the digital audio workstation developers to know exactly what how to accept the synth software. So it just allows us to, to talk to each other. It was developed by Steinberg, by the way. Okay, so now it's loaded, and I have this on the flute. So let's solo the flute and find flute in these this list. There are a lot of tones, and it seems like a lot until you're looking for something specific. I'm fortunate that flute is here. You'll notice it has flute echo as the choice, which is one of the woodwind options, the phantom. So if I play this, and then I play in Ableton, you're gonna notice it's very similar, and it's a beautiful flute sound. So the advantage of Xenology is the tones you get are terrific and they're familiar. Uh, that extends to the effects. Look at some of these effects. Uh, the downside is, there isn't major wave editing, but tape echo, two tap pan delay, these are the effects that we know. No, I don't want that in this case. SRV 2000, that's a Roland reverb. Uh, so like Ableton, if you can find a tone you like, you're in luck. And there are gonna be a few more phantom friendly tones in the Synology library. And I got very fortunate that the five instruments I'm looking for were all in here. There's flute, clarinet, Trumpet, and let's do trombone. Now let's give that a listen. I better turn it down. They come in pretty hot. And I can adjust the pan. And now we have a pretty wholesome sound and I'm right with the metronome. So that works pretty well and we're in good shape. So what do you do if the tone you want is not in Xenology? I'm gonna show you another plugin that I've been using and this is the Korg M1. I have a website for that. The M1 was a keyboard Korg released in 1988. So you can immediately tell that one of the downsides of M1 is the tones are a little dated. They updated it in 2005, that was V2. So some of them are great and some of them aren't. So if I go to M1, here's something else that's really cool is that you can run it as a separate app. So if you have a keyboard that doesn't have a synth, it's just a controller, you can run this and it'll work for you. I need to use channel one. Let me turn off system, turn off my, in, my sound. 
So I'm only generating here. Uh, there are a lot of fun sounds in the M1. Now this is the paid version. There is a free version and it has, as you can imagine, some of the sounds and some of the effects. It's easy to layer sounds. So let me, uh, I'll mark this one down. You can split the keyboard just by dragging it. Load another sound over here. Show you some of the leads. Some of them are dated, some of them are timeless. Uh, let me show you how this sounds that comes together. This is kind of fun. So that's fine, what you can see there, interesting, so we're using the Phantom for half of it, using the Vem1 as the executable for another, and that gives you a lot of power, and you can take this on the road, and all these tones work. There are effects that you could imagine, the typical compressor, flanger, overdrive, digital filters, digital amplifiers, attacks, sustain, decay, release, all the stuff that you would expect, very powerful, and it runs as executable. So the great thing about the M1, a lot of tones, you can load more and save them. Downside is some of them are dated. Upside is you can do the full wave editing. There is a free version. The paid version is $100, although sometimes you can get it on sale for $50. Synology is $230. Contact player is $300. So if you want a lot of tones, you might end up paying for it. Let's go in and put this on my bass and see if it sounds any better than the one that's enabled. Same app, but now it's running as a VST instead of an executable. I need to do, oh, I need to enable it so I can hear it. Here. Change the tone. Load, and now we want a bass. I'm gonna pick this round bass. It defaults to the wrong octave. So I want to move it up an octave and it defaults to a lot of effects, which I don't need. Did I mention one of the downsides of the M1 is a very confusing interface. It's manageable, but it's confusing. All right, let's see how this sounds. And that all sounds fine. So I could take this on the road right now and listen to all of that. I want to add one more thing and that is some percussion because the song needs a little energy and I'm gonna have a problem with the verse, which I'll talk about in a second. So let me go add it here and select drums, which is not easy to see because it's all the way at the bottom. What's awesome about the drums, you can adjust the, here I'm hitting C sharp too, you can adjust what sounds you get with each key, you can adjust level pan, all that kind of stuff as you would expect. But what's super fun, with the drums is that the key mapping is the same as with the Phantom. So watch, if I play this pattern here, this is the Phantom, this is the Phantom and Analogy. So it's, of course you could go change the keys to be whatever you want, but it is super handy that they kind of start out in the right place. And I'll put it on both six and seven. And I want to put a couple measures of shaker on my refrain. I think I'm done looking at the I.O. All right. Let's go here. Let's go turn my metronome back on. I need this being 3-4. And let's try it. All right. That should be all I need. I only need four measures. How'd we do? Fine. Now my verse starts with four measures of rest. So I need to put some percussion there or I'm going to lose the beat. And I'll use some bongos down there. I need to cue that scene.
Now, you don't want to have bongos on the verse and then go to lower energy on the refrain, so I need to put a couple measures of bongos on the refrain as well. But I need to cue it. Enough of that. I only need four measures. Got it. So I have my refrain, my verse. I want to have a final refrain, and then I'm going to have a last note, which I'll end with. And that is going to be down here and double click. And then I just make it long. I do not want that particular riff to repeat. Let's hit it there. And I'm going to put a little bongo roll. And I don't want that to repeat either. Let's listen to how that sounds. Let's come up with a sequence. Verse one is going to roll into, the refrain is going to roll into verse one. I happen to know that that is 31 measures long. The verse is going to roll into the final refrain. I happen to know the verse is 12. Final refrain is going to roll into the last note. So we're going to cut that one short a bit. And then the last note is going to stop. And it'll be, make it four. I don't know how long that's really going to run. And I do not need the metronome. Last thing I need to do is I can turn this off, hide all that, bring this up. The last thing I need to do is put my driver back, audio, ACO for all, hardware setup, and then send it to my sound card. Let's see how that sounds. I can come down to my laptop. Select this sound card, and that's enough to send to my mixer. Let's put some uh, control on here. Normally I would use this MIDI button and use a MIDI controller to start and stop the song, but I'm not going to have the keyboard, so I'm going to use my keyboard. I'm not going to have my Phantom keyboard, so I need to use my computer keyboard. I'll press key, and I've been using the Z key to start it because it's right in the corner and I'm not likely to hit, hit something else by mistake. But I need a key to stop it during rehearsals and in the case something goes wrong. So I'll skip one and I'll use C for that. But now I can hit C to reset and Z to play it. And let's see how that's going to sound. And you turn my sound back on. This will be one, two, three, one, two, three. So that'll be perfect. All right, next step is to take this down the hall and I'll set it up by the piano. And we'll do the play out there. All right, let's go. So I'm going to go. Bop. Boom. All right, let's try it. This is Amor de Dios by Bob Hurd. stop. So you see the backing tracks add a lot of energy even when you're not using it on the Phantom and that's really fun. I'm going to play that again I think. I hope this was valuable to you. I hope you learned something and if you did please consider subscribing. Leave a comment. I'd love to talk to you. I'll keep making more. See you next time.